We have uh, New South Wales Water Minister Melinda Pavey joining us live now. Thanks for your time this afternoon, Minister. Charlotte, a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Sydney's dam levels, uh, they've plunged to well below what we have seen in previous droughts. How concerning is this? Look, I'm concerned. Everyone is concerned. I mean, our states are facing this huge natural disaster with bushfires simply because we haven't had the rain that we need. And these, uh, these bushfires and the, and the challenges we face in Sydney's catchment, but right across the whole of New South Wales, it's in some parts of the state, it's like a drought we've never seen. The government has announced that there are plans to uh, fast track the approval to double the capacity of Sydney's Cornell desalination plant. Uh, but how fast can that be done? Look. We've got to do our proper homework and due diligence. We're doing final business case at the moment. Yes, a decision is yet to be made. We are hoping that we might get some rain over the weekend, but the predictions are for, for light rain, not drought breaking rains. We're going to need months and months of rain across the state. So we're also looking at uh, enhancing our re recycling opportunities, looking at bore fields, uh, pipelines, and even another desalination plant is being uh, discussed with the community in the, in the Illawarra. So there are lots of ways that we need to look at to extend our water supply, but also plan for the future. And this drought is giving us the opportunities to, to fast track some of that work that will be there and help us into the future but also get us through this drought. Uh, some uh, new dams have been announced across New South Wales uh, that are going to be created and it, particularly if we decide to double the capacity of uh, Cornell that would be helpful too uh, but as you say that even though we are getting some good rain uh, at the end of this week, it's actually not going to be anywhere near enough to actually boost those uh, dam levels substantially. And even if we build these dams now, there's no rain falling in them. So what do we do in the meantime? We look at desalination, we look at recycling, we look at bore fields. We've had record bore applications right across New South Wales to keep our towns and our farmers um, operating. And, and those processes around bores are complicated. We've got to make sure they don't affect other groundwater users. Uh, big lot of challenges for us, but the simple solution and the most beautiful solution is rain. Um, there has been a change in the diapoles, mm. some positive radar images on satellite coming forward. We've all got our fingers crossed, but now we also have the challenge with uh, 350 hectares around Warragamba Dam affected by bushfires. We've had to put in silt curtains and, uh, and barrages to be able to ensure the integrity of that water supply. So there's no end of challenges with this drought that's created bushfires, uh, mm. which has created plummeting storage levels. But we do know it's going to rain, which is why we're going to go ahead and we're going to do Wyangla Dam, Dungowan Dam, looking at a new dam on the Queensland border, Mole River. You know, we need to be able to mitigate against climate catastrophe if we have extended droughts, we need to be able to capture the water when it does fall. And the positive outlook is some good east coast lows and even some cyclonic activity in northern Queensland. If we have those return to normal patterns, we will have the dams in place now, but more dams into the future to capture that beautiful rain. I have, uh, I've seen as well the changes in the Indian Ocean uh, Diapole and also the uh, potential for a La Nina. Uh, but you do understand, uh, I guess, the frustration as well of country people, or particularly people that are really their livelihood depends on water, in that if we do get that uh, in the next year and we do see substantial rainfall, the drive from the general public and the pressure on politicians to create uh, more dams and to create better water supplies and better water storage does really dwindle because people see it now. We are, uh, a lot of the country is on fire. We are in one of the worst droughts we have on record. And if we do get that substantial rainfall, then people start to really ease back and they forget about how vital water is. So what are we doing, I guess, right at this moment? You said you're looking at a number of different options and I do note that they are complex, but what else is in the pipeline that will be announced soon that people will know that uh, before the next drought, we are better equipped than we were for this one? 
Charlotte, I can give you an absolute 100% guarantee. I'm one of those country people. I'm one of those people that actually grew up on a farm that relied on irrigation. I know that our nation's wealth and our opportunities come from putting more water into our storages to mitigate against climate variation. We won't be dropping the ball on those new dams, but also on other enhancement of the supply for Sydney. We need it uh, most immediately now, looking at those options for Sydney because of the fall in the in the dam levels across uh, the Sydney catchment but we also need to be planning for the future I'm not afraid of that and I know the community is behind us but I also know that we won't lose that energy as we go into an, uh, a La Nina mm. most hopefully and we get good rains and we start capturing and storing so we don't have the situation where the people of Sydney can't use their hose to to to, to you know wash down their house of the ash and you know I just want to acknowledge too today you know that that support from the Commonwealth, our farmers, and I represent an area that relies on, on, on dairy farmers, on beef growers, um, you know, we are doing it so tough, even on the mid-north coast of New South Wales, and, and to have this new support coming from the, from the Feds is so welcome, um, but we need to ensure that we respect water even more going forward and not ever forget the lessons that we've learnt during this very difficult period. Yeah, well, I certainly hope that if we do see some good rainfall uh, over the next 12 months, that pressure, as you say, will not be lifted because there does need to be a lot that takes place before the next drought. Uh, but we'll move to a slightly different topic. In December, Greater Sydney were placed on Level 2 water restrictions. How far off are we from Level 3? Is that imminent or is something that could be quite avoided? The best way to avoid level three is lots of rain, um, but we have to be considering um, those options. And you know, unfortunately, levels three would have um, a pretty severe impact um, on on business, and mm. we we don't want to get to that point. Um, and that's why we're trying to extend um, the 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 supply and 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 keep that level falling uh, as low as possible. Are we far but away we from do, it? Uh, our, our Metropolitan Water Plan uh, currently predicts that we might need to be looking at that around March, uh, but we will continue to talk with the community and take, us, uh, take them with us on this journey. We are mm. challenged, there is no doubt. We've never seen um, the catchment across Sydney and our Warragamba Dam fall so quickly and mm. suddenly the catchment now is at 42.7%, Warragamba Dam just over 43%, that's where 85% of our water comes from. So. Yeah. It is something that we have to be responsible and we have to talk about it and we are talking Sydney Water is uh, in regular contact with our heavy water users around industry. We need to ensure that, uh, that we protect our water supply. The decision to build the desalination plant in around 2008 was made by a previous uh, Labor government and it was a real shock to Sydney when they went ahead with that construction. I'm, in, I'm very, very determined to keep the conversations going with people right across Sydney um, and New South Wales about where we're at because we're all on this journey together. We, uh, you mentioned it before about uh, Warragamba. We already have uh, water levels at such a low level. The Greenwattle Creek blazer that's burning on the outskirts of southwest Sydney, it's burning uh, right around Warragamba Dam. And you did touch on this before, but I'd like a little bit more detail if we can. How are the fires impacting water quality? At this point, uh, there is a challenge for us protecting Sydney's water quality because 300 and, uh, sorry, 20 hectares, I think I said 350 before, but 320 hectares of um, the area around Warragamba Dam has been severely burnt. So our test will come when it rains and what happens as that water goes into the catchment. And because of the debris on the ground, um, it will be less likely to soak into the ground and will go towards the dam, which is why we're putting silt curtains around also uh, booms to be able to capture that the worst of that debris. Is that expensive um, to, to do those? It is a challenge for us, yes, many millions of dollars, but we need to do that. We mm. need to protect our water supply and we will have be having our continued regular monitoring of that water supply. And I was told today there's actually about 70 uh, points in the process, 70 types of tests and testing wow. points 
that are required um, to ensure the integrity of that water supply. So the big challenge will be that there's obviously going to be an impact. We can't uh, we can't uh, ensure that we annihilate that impact. We've got to um, try and uh, ameliorate that impact, mm. but also make sure we keep testing the water uh, and ensuring that we don't have to to go to excessive treatment mm. um, to to maintain the integrity of that supply. But we'll be watching um, and we'll be testing and we'll be ensuring the quality of that supply and we'll keep communicating with the public. Just uh, before uh, I let you go, today the Prime Minister announced $75,000 grants for primary producers. Uh, you mentioned before you're from a farming background yourself. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think this is going to be enough to help the uh, bushfire affected farmers and primary producers? I just want to thank the Prime Minister enormously. I've been to meetings South Arm um, at the back of Maxwell on Friday night and to hear their stories, to hear the farmers' stories. They've lost um, so much infrastructure, so much fencing, um, barely able to afford the feed. At the back of the Maclay, I was with the Treasurer of New South Wales at the back of uh, Kempsey and Warren on Sunday. This will mean so much. Um, this is a great boost. It complements a lot of the work the state government has been doing. And this is what our community wants to see. Two good governments working together hand on hand, hand in hand, I mm -hmm. should say, helping our communities. Um, on behalf of my constituents, I'm incredibly grateful. Our dairy farmers and our beef cattle producers, what they are going through is is. You wouldn't, you wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy. Um, those, and I just those really farmers acknowledge that you and are, thank this support. The farmers that you are speaking about, that you have spoken with uh, personally, are they saying they're getting access to those grants and the funding available quickly enough? I know that this one was only announced today, but there have been a range of other announcements so far. Look, one of the challenges we have is a lot of, um, particularly in my patch, a lot of farmers um, have off-farm income. So being able to jump through those hoops um, is, is really tricky if they're working off-farm and then working their farms at night or weekends. Um, that has been a challenge. Mm. This, uh, these cash grants, you know, when, you, when I've got farmers paying $10,000, $20,000, $30,000, dollars $40,000 a month just to keep their dairy herds alive, this will be an absolute lifesaver. And the best part, it's going to keep farmers in. It's going to keep them working. It's going to keep them um, not selling their herds because, you know, that is a real challenge. You know, we want fresh milk in our supermarkets. Mm. You know, I think everybody knows we should be paying a little bit more. You know, it's crazy when milk is cheaper than Coca-Cola or water in bottled. Um, so we need to, to, to reward, acknowledge, support those farmers because if we don't have fresh milk in our supermarkets, then, then we've got problems as a nation. Then that would have huge impacts on our, on our factories like Norco on the north coast of New South Wales, employing hundreds of local people in our region. Um, this is a really significant and positive announcement um, from Michael McCormack and from uh, the Prime Minister. It works well with what we've been doing as a state and I just know what it will mean to keep many of our farmers on the land. Okay. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. The Minister of Water, Melinda Pavey there. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Charlotte.